What's good guys, we're back at it again with another video as you see from the title. Today we have a vid that I know you guys have been waiting to see. I've been waiting to make my 2023 top 10 rankings. This 2023 class, we've been watching film on them since it's been way over a year. So every player that you're going to see in this top 10, I've seen full game film on more than two to three, four games. Like, cause I really wanted to make a real top 10, not something that, oh, this player has a big name. I need to put him at the top. No, I actually wanted to watch the film so I can come with the most accurate top 10 list that I can. There will be a couple players that won't be included in this. I'll name them now so you guys know, oh, where's this player? Where's that player? Uh, Mookie Cook, Tyrese Proctor, uh, Xavier Booker won't be in this top 10. Mookie Cook, he hasn't been playing in these last couple months. You know he's been filming that movie with Bron or for Bron. You know we got to go watch that when that comes out. Tyrese Proctor, I just haven't been able to watch enough film that I feel comfortable ranking him. Same thing with Xavier Booker. I've seen Xavier Booker's clips. I've seen uh, I've seen maybe one or two games, but from what I saw from those one or two full games, not just highlights, I need to see more if I'm going to throw him in the top 10. But he's definitely a player that needs to get that look when I come with the second edition or third edition of this exact list right here. Before we get into it, I do have to say this. I've been getting a lot of DMs, comments. Uh, most of them are questions. Maybe you need advice on, you know, AAU or Maybe you're a high school senior about to be a college freshman playing a sport, playing basketball, and you want to hear about my transition story or things that I did to help, you know, my process and help me acclimate to college and just anything in the recruiting world or anything like that. You guys have had a lot of questions, so I was able to make an account on this platform called Noodle right here. You guys can go on there, ask me individual questions, or you can, you know, schedule me for an entire month and I'll give you guys, you know, answers to your questions. I feel like it'll be really good just a place where I can help as many as you guys as possible. So again, if you need any advice, go on there, go ahead, ask me a question. I'll get back to you extremely fast. Back to this top 10, you know, a lot of people on YouTube like to do top 10s in reverse order, get you to watch through the whole thing. You know, I'm not doing any of that. Let's jump right into it. Again, keep in mind, this is just the first version of my rankings because if you guys didn't know, no player stays the same. There will be players over these next couple months to a year that get better and there will be players that get worse and end up dropping in the rankings. But I'm pretty sure it wasn't hard to figure out. The number one player for me in the class of 2023 DJ Wagner. You know, I'm part of the group that says if a player is number one, anybody else who's under him, you have to go take that spot. It isn't just going to be given to you. You know, in other rankings, I've seen, you know, a player who might have had, you know, two good games or they might have had a good session and all of a sudden they leapfrog all these other guys. No, that's not how it works. That guy that's at the top has to be slacking, not producing. And then you have to show, like, show and prove consistently that no, I should be the number one player for me. DJ Wagner is the player that's at the top that has not given up that spot at all. For me, DJ is the player that's playing like he wants to get that number one spot. Like you guys forget, I'm the guy who is literally on the channel. The first time I watched DJ Wagner play basketball on film, I said, yeah, he's good, but I don't know if this is the number one player in the class. Like, and all he's done since then is prove me wrong and let me know that at the time I had no idea what I was talking about because I was thinking like, oh, yeah, you know, I know New Jersey got hoopers. Right. And he was winning all the time with Camden. But I was like, yeah, you know, I'm not sure what he's going to look like against, you know, other elite competition. You guys know in my breakdowns and my rankings, we run film as well. So let's just run it. We go to AAU and I start to notice that. Hold on. DJ is a legit killer. And it doesn't matter who's in front of him. Watch the film. What makes him so great, and a lot of people don't understand this, how hard it is to be a number one player when you're not a 6'5", 6'6", freak athlete guard. No, you're a 6'2", to 6'3", guard whose game is legitimately technical. I'm getting to my spots, which makes DJ so great. It doesn't matter who's in front of him. This kid, he's not playing around. He's not wasting dribbles. I want you guys to watch. This is a legitimate three-level score. Can shoot the three can shoot the mid-range, can finish with either hand around the rim. And when you watch him on film, it doesn't look like, you know, he's the fastest. He's the most athletic. But I like I wanted to show you guys, there isn't much wasted movement. Everything is getting to a spot. Like a lot of players don't really understand when you dribble in place, like you're not doing anything. Like the defender can just press up on you. DJ, none of his dribbles is just, oh, I'm just trying to dribble in place looking like uh, Julian Newman. No offense. No, it's all he's trying to get to a spot, which is why he can get to his pull-up whenever he wants to. Why he can change speeds all the time, get downhill, and he can finish with either hand around the rim. Not to mention, he's a dog. 
Like this player is a dog. I'm not going to say, you know, some of the things that I've seen, but like this is a dog. Like I know legitimately DJ Wagner is a dog. He's not into all the social media. Like this kid is really like that. And I, you know, I can't wait to see what he does in the future, how his game expands. But I will say these dudes coming behind him in this top 10, hungry, hungry. My number two player in the class of 2023 is 6'8", power forward out of South Carolina, North Carolina commit, G.G. Jackson. So G.G. plays on Team CP3 with Rob and Aiden Holloway. And I remember when I first watched Rob and I was watching Aiden, I'm like, who is this big man? Like he's doing a whole lot on the floor and you know, he's extremely skilled, but I'm also seeing him doing the dirty work. So I'm like, okay, like, you know, he might have something here. Obviously, let's start running the film. Gigi Jackson is an extremely skilled power forward who can affect the game in a number of different ways, right? One of the biggest things that I saw, because Gigi is extremely skilled. You can see it on the film. He can put it down one to two dribbles. You know what I'm saying? He can knock down the mid-range jumper. He can hit post turnaround fadeaways. He can knock down the three every now and then. But the thing that caught my eye from the film right away is his rim running, his rim running, because bigs, you know, I had to learn this. I learned this when I got to college. You know, they told me in high school, but I didn't really understand it until I got to college. How many easy points you get as a big man from just running the middle of the floor, running the middle of the floor. So when I see GG, not just relying on his skill, not just all the time facing up on the block and shooting step backs and doing all this extra stuff. No, I'm seeing him playing like a big as well, running the floor that bodes well for him in the future when his shot isn't falling. He's still going to be enough of a dog to be able to get on the glass and get those points, get those garbage points that other people don't want to get. He's going to be able to score the ball in a number of different ways because like I said, this kid can play inside. He does show flashes. He has jump hooks. He has some post work, but he also has the fadeaways with it as well. He also is able to score in the mid-range. He can knock down that mid-range jumper, and he can face up out of the mid-range and put it down one to two dribbles. He can do the same thing from the three-point line. He can also knock down a three every now and then. I'm not saying he's the greatest shooter now, but he's showing flashes of it. And like I said, with the rim running and just his ability to catch oops because he also is a plus-level athlete. I don't know if you guys noticed, bigs aren't supposed to be moving like that, jumping that high. You can even throw it ahead to him in transition. And he's able to make plays because he is so coordinated and fluid with his movements. So at the next level and then beyond, again, this is going to be a matchup problem because you can put him out in space against slow footed fives or you can post him up against, you know, smaller fours. You can put him up against a whole lot of different players and he can switch a little bit because he can move his feet. So offensively and defensively, just really playing the game. GG has a chance to be special. Let's move into number three. Number three player in the class of 2023 in my ranking, six, seven and six, eight. Big wing out of Jersey, Mackenzie Mbako, also DJ Wagner's teammate on the Scholars. Uh, Mackenzie, I haven't done a recent breakdown on him on the channel, but I have been watching full games, of course, because I do keep up with the Scholars, you know, how they've been playing. DJ, as well as him, as well as their big, uh, Aaron Bradshaw, I like to watch him as well. But like I said with Mackenzie, this is a 6'7 and 6'8 wing. I say wing because right now in AAU, it looks like they use him a little bit at the four as well, but at the next level and in the level that he's definitely trying to get to at some point, he's probably going to have to play the wing position. Uh, but his game at this point right now, bread and butter, what he's trying to do is shoot the ball, like shoot the ball. McKenzie's game is predicated on his jump shot and his ability to knock down jump shots. This is a player who you can't give any space to, especially because he is six seven. I remember last year when we did his first breakdown, he was getting off shots against Jalen Dern, who's going to be a lottery pick in this upcoming draft. And then Derek Lively as well, who's going to probably going to be a lottery pick in next year's draft too. And these are, if you don't know, Dern's like 6'8", 6'9", freak athlete. Lively's a footer, also a freak athlete with a long wingspan. And McKenzie was still able to get his shot off consistently. So this is a player who you're going to have to close out hard on. You're actually going to have to get in his space because he's looking to shoot at all times, whether that be in transition He's trying to relocate to the corners or on the wings, get shots up, or he'll push it himself in transition, come down, and if someone isn't there to step up, he'll walk right into it, knock it down. Even when he does put the ball down, he can score. Like, he can he can score in the paint. He can get to the paint, but that isn't what he's trying to do. When he does put it down, he's trying to get to a spot. Like, most of the time, if he's going left, it looks like he's going behind the back just to get right into a pull-up, mid-range, knock that down. He doesn't have a problem taking contestant shots. For me, when you have players like this, when you can already see that he can knock down shots, right? That he's a mismatched problem at the four, 
you know, his handle might not be okay at the level at consistently being at the perimeter yet. But when you think towards the future, I've said this a thousand times, if you're six, seven and above and can shoot 40% from three, there's a spot for you in that three letter league. So for him, as he, you know, as the years goes on, as he starts to expand his handle, start to develop, you know, being able to get by dudes and getting in the, in the lane and still finishing strong to add on to his mid range game and his ability to knock down the perimeter jumper. I'm telling you, McKenzie got a shot to be really good. Let's go to number four. Number four player in the class of 2023 is a player who I have to say this, I feel like was blatantly disrespected in those 24 seven rankings. I think they had him at maybe number 13 or 14. Who I'm talking about is a 6'1", 6'2", combo guard, played for Donda Academy this past season, Rob Dillingham, right? And Rob, Rob is a player who on this channel, he's one of the players who I've watched almost more than anybody else, I want to say. Like, I've seen him play on numerous occasions, and the reason why I'm saying he was disrespected is, I can't say I remember a game that I've turned on film of Rob Dillingham, and he didn't produce, he didn't wow me in some way, shape, or form. Let's just talk about his game, right? So when you talk about Rob, I've said it before in other breakdowns of him, his game resembles in no way am I saying that he's that level of player or anything like that. But what I said is his game resembles more of a Kyrie in that he is extremely creative with the ball in his hands. This is a player who has one of the best handles in high school basketball. He's extremely crafty and he can score the ball legitimately legitimately can score the ball on all different levels in many different ways because his game is extremely reactive. Him as well as Aiden Holloway, I do want to say this really fast, Aiden isn't in this top 10, but he's definitely a top 15, 20, 25 player for sure. Wanted to say that, but for both of them, why they're so effective is their games are extremely reactive. You can't guard them because they don't know the move they're going to do. They're just going to make a simple rip through and however your body shifts, they're going to react off of that. So for them, they might do a crazy behind the back or some in and out, you know what I'm saying? Crazy hop step, something crazy, something you've never seen before because that's how creative they are with their games. Like Rob Dillingham, if you even check his stats from the last session, EYBL session, I'm not sure if there was, there might've been one game that he didn't score more than 22 points. And people know, like you guys know, you can see how he scores the ball. These aren't the easiest of baskets. Like he takes tough shots. Like he takes tough shots. And he makes them. Most of his field goal percentages is at least above 45%. So like I said, like he's extremely creative with his game. And he can knock down the three. He can knock down the mid-range jumper. He can get to those spots whenever he wants. Because like I said, he is extremely creative with the ball in his hands. But his ability to finish around the rim. Like it's, I'm talking about wide finishes. Whatever you want. Flips off the glass and traffic jelly either hand. That's what that's that's what differentiates him from other players because yeah, you have shooters. You have, like I said, Rob's creative, he's crafty, he can get to a spot whenever he wants, he shows he can knock down jumpers, but his ability to finish amongst the trees, even with his he's small, like he's slender build, but he has all the finishes. So I just want to see again in the future, like how his game's gonna continue to evolve. Because right now, in terms of scoring the ball, I can't say that there are better or more efficient scores right now. In high school, than Rob Dillingham. Let's go to number five. My number five player in the class of 2023, 6'8", power forward out of Florida, uh, 230, Sean Stewart, right? And this is, Sean Stewart is one of, you know, my favorite players in the class simply because, of course, his dimensions are similar to mine. Like, he's 6'8", 230. I'm 6'8", 6'9". Shoot, right now we pushing 260, 270. But, you know, this is what... This is his game, like is literally when I envisioned when I was in college and I envisioned my evolution of my game, this is what it looks like because this is a extremely strong power forward who can affect the game on offense and on defense and is extremely dominant on both ends. Let's talk about it, right? When you think of Sean Stewart up to this point right now and even out into the future, try and think more of a bam out of bio in terms of evolution of the game because right now, Sean is more raw, right? Right now, it is more, you see, he's relentless on the glass, which is one of the things I love. Like, if this is one of those players, if you don't box him out, there is a chance he will dunk on you every single time. He's going to the offensive glass every single time trying to get a rebound. And once he gets it, he's going back up strong. He's going back up to dunk, kind of like how Bam was. Like I'm saying, he was a little raw at the time. It is more offensive rebounds, but as you also saw, kind of like what Bam has expanded upon now as he's gotten to the league, flashes of offense, flashes of skill. So Sean 
being able to push in transition and finish. I don't know if you guys noticed, that's an extremely tough layup to make, especially as a big man. Wide finish, high off the glass. That's great touch. He also shows flashes of being able to face up, jab, knock down that jumper, turn around from the mid post and knock that down. He can also knock down an open three every now and then. Granted, it's not a strength now, but it is something that he can develop over the future. But one thing you can't teach, the thing that you cannot teach is that mindset to be dominant. The mindset of when the shot goes up on the backboard, I'm going to get the rebound every single time. When I have two feet in the paint, I'm going up to dunk every single time. When I'm on defense, I'm trying to block every single shot. That's what I'm seeing for Sean. He just has a presence of, of dominance out there on the court. That's what I'm seeing. You know what I'm saying? He doesn't really take plays off and he's affecting the game on both ends. But these flashes of offense is what's extremely interesting. Combined with that athleticism is the reason why in these past sessions of EYBL, he has multiple 2020 games. and most of his games, he has double-doubles. This is a double-double machine coming into Duke next year. I can't wait to see what this dude does. I'm going to be watching and tuning in because I think like these flashes... He continues to put that work in. I can't wait to see what he's going to become. Number six is a 6'9", 6'10", small forward out of Illinois. Uh, this is a player who, over the last couple months, has started to get a lot of buzz, has started to get a lot of more eyes on him. First time I watched him was like a couple weeks ago to a month ago. Matas Buselis. This is a player who blew up on social media when people started to see a he was branded as a 6'10 point guard out there in EYBL. So, of course, when I saw it, I'm like, okay, we got to watch this kid. Let's talk about his game. Matas, at his size, 6'9", 6'10", I've said it in a lot of videos before, this new evolution of the game, these players that are 6'7", to 6'10", that are extremely skilled. You're not finding bigs. You're not finding a lot of bigs, back to the basket bigs, bigs like me, rim runners anymore. Even with GG, Sean Stewart, like, yeah, these dudes can score in the paint. They do have... You know, they show they can make jump hooks, but they also are skilled. They can both put it down. Matas takes that a step further. Matas is a primary ball handler at his height, or at least that's what they use them for in AAU. I'm watching a 6'9", 6'10", basketball player bring the ball down and initiate offense and do it extremely effectively. Matas' ability to handle the ball and actually legitimately have the ball in his hands and handle pressure is next level. Like, there aren't many guys that size who have that combination of skill and fluidity as well as body control when you have smaller guards pressing up on him because that's one thing I was thinking about. Like, okay, he might be able to be a primary ball handler when there's only fours guard number five because he is a mismatch problem because he is so, like I said, fluid, athletic for his size. But I was watching guards press up on him and he's handling pressure Still have the ball, and he's still getting where he wants to. Leave him open on the perimeter. He can knock down the three easily. He can take you off the dribble in isolation situations, and it isn't just straight line. Matas can change directions. He can stop on the dime, step back, you know what I'm saying, knock that down. He can get to the paint, and you would think because of his size, you see him, he is a little skinny, that he wouldn't be able to finish, you know, with size in the paint. No, he can finish amongst the trees because he is athletic, you know what I'm saying? And he is skilled. He does have touch around the rim. And he's showing that he can take a little bit of contact. He isn't too scared of it. There are times where he will be hesitant. He might shoot a fadeaway here or there, just shying away from it. But he does show that he can finish in the paint. So just for him to have a player that size to be able to dominate a game, you know what I'm saying? With the ball in his hands, primarily, again, being able to come off of a pick and roll and consistently make reads at that size. Granted, in college... They're probably going to put him at the four. He might play a little bit at the five just because of his mismatch problems. Kind of like how Gonzaga used Chet. You still let him bring it up. You still let him have the ball in his hands from time to time. He just won't be a primary. But he's going to be a matchup problem for years to come. He can knock down the perimeter shot. He can knock down the mid-range shot. He can finish in the paint. Because of his size, you put a smaller guy on him, he can get that shot off easily. You put a bigger guy on him because he is athletic and he can handle what we've been talking about. He can get by dudes. He isn't just straight line. He can change directions and do things like that. So again, this is going to be a matchup problem for years to come. Let's go to number seven. At number seven, we have a 6'7", Uber athlete out of Pennsylvania, Justin Edwards. He's another player along with Matas. Over the last couple of weeks, I've started to see a lot more push on social media. I actually, for him, I saw him dunk on somebody crazy and I'm like, okay, 
Like we definitely have to tune into this kid. I think in the new 24-7 rankings, he was bumped up into the top three. Let's talk about his game. Like I said before, this is an uber athlete. He can also shoot the ball, but he also has the potential to really affect the game on the defensive end as well. Because of his athleticism, of course, Justin Edwards is great in transition. Once you get out on the break, there aren't many people who can stop him with a head of steam, especially once he jumps in the air. There's nothing you can do. He's going to punch it or he's going to finish it. He also shows that, you know, he does have some touch around the rim, even though, of course, he does prefer that left hand, either finishing above you or around you when he does put it down on the floor, at least in the half court. It's more straight line drives. He's not really, you know what I'm saying, giving you a whole bunch of moves, changing direction like that. He's trying to go left, get to his left hand. And like I said, finish above you with his athleticism or finish around you with some touch. Let's say you cut him off. He also likes getting to that pull up with the left hand because like I said, Justin Edwards can shoot the ball. Like he can legitimately shoot the ball. He likes getting into that pull up going left. But one of the things that I noticed in his film that was different than other players is his intensity, even when he doesn't have the ball. Like there weren't, there aren't a lot of high school players because you really don't really, you know, teach it or they don't really teach it to you. You don't really learn it until you get to college. That intensity off the ball is kind of why Steph is so effective. I'm seeing Justin Edwards sprint off of Iversons, sprint off of pin downs to get open. Granted, he doesn't need a lot of space because he's 6'7 and he's a freak athlete. He can get his shot off, but he still sprints to his spots to get open and he's knocking down a lot of these shots. Even when his shot's not falling, he's also relentless on the glass. He gets, he's also a very good rebounder at his position. He's going to the glass. He's getting offensive rebounds. Say he misses a shot. I've played with one player who can do this. Justin Edwards is a type of player who can also do this as well. A player who can shoot a three, miss it, and dunk their putback. Justin Edwards is that type of player. He's going to get on the offensive glass. Defensively, because of his length, because of his athleticism, he's going to be able to switch off onto numerous different players. He's, if he wants to, he's going to be able to guard a lot of different guys because he does shift his feet. And like you guys saw, this is an actual competitor who likes to win. Number eight, we got a 6'4 guard out of Virginia. He's also a Duke commit. This is also a player that actually might surprise a lot of people that I have him in my top 10. This is a player that I actually think that a lot of people are sleeping on. We got Caleb Foster. Caleb is a player similar to DJ. The first time I watched him, I kind of underestimated it. I think with Caleb, it was the Oak Hill breakdown. And I think I might have been focused on, you know, some of the other players. Maybe it was Chris Livingston or Judah Mintz on that team. I was focused on other players instead of him. But I remember thinking like, yeah, you know, he's solid. And then you guys kept commenting his name. And then I watched the film, EYBL film, and I'm watching it. And I'm like, hold on, this is like, is this the same player I was watching on Oak Hill? Go back and watch Oak Hill. I'm like, okay, he did show flashes of this. But on the EYBL stage, when he isn't surrounded by, you know, a whole bunch of five stars like he is on Oak Hill, you really get to see how this kid plays. He's currently ranked number 22 on ESPN. But like I said, to me, this is the number eight player in the class of 2023. When you watch Caleb move away from Oak Hill to a team like Team Thad, where there isn't, you know, crazy amount of five-star talent, you really get to see how good this kid actually is. Caleb Foster at 6'4", he looks a little bit more 6'5", literally does almost, he checks almost every box you want to on the floor. Scoring-wise, he can knock down the three, whether that be set or off the dribble, has no problem with it. In the mid-range, he can get to a spot wherever he wants, especially in isolation situations. And because of his size, he isn't a freak athlete, anything like that, but he shows he has touch, he has leaners, he can finish around the rim. And one thing that I didn't notice is he fills up the stat sheet. If you check his EYBL stats, I don't know how many games I saw that he had 20 plus points, seven plus rebounds, five plus assists. And I'm talking about this is consistently with the rebounds. I'm watching him consistently go to the glass defensively, offensively, trying to get rebounds. These are winning plays, passing in terms of his vision. It wasn't that he has the vision of, uh, let's say, uh, Isaiah Collier, who's coming after this, or somebody like that. His vision is more of his understanding of when I drive, because I am such a dynamic offensive player. You guys can see he is going to attract two, and all he's doing, he's making the simple play, because you have a lot of players who they think that they're so good that two people come, you know what I'm saying? That don't matter. I'm still taking this shot. He's just making the simple play. It's like, okay, I see two. I'm just going to kick it. Okay, I'm driving and I see a whole bunch of eyes. Again, I'm going to kick it. If I drive in the paint 
and the bid comes over, drop off to my bid. Like the simple plays, but when you check that stat sheet, and I was surprised when I saw this, multiple games, again, 20 plus points, seven plus rebounds, five plus assists. Go check it if you think I'm lying. This is a player who I think that people are sleeping on. If you really go watch his film away from Oak Hill, he's better than what people think. Number nine, we got a Georgia boy, 6'2", 6'3", point guard out of Marietta, Georgia, Wheeler High School, Cobb County product, Isaiah Collier. For the other guards that we've done in this top 10 have been more combo scoring guards. Isaiah Collier, point guard, point guard, point guard. Legitimate point guard that can also get you a bucket when you need one. Let's talk about it. Isaiah Collier is an example of everything as a coach you would want at the lead guard spot. The person that you would want in the position to be the on-court coach on the floor. Isaiah is that guy because in this class, I'm not sure if I've seen a player that's better in terms of making reads on the floor, playing in the pick and roll, playing with space, really running the offense and getting everyone on his team involved. This is a player who's going to be a threat to have double digit assist game after game after game, especially if he's surrounded by talented players. Similar to his skill level, they're only gonna look better because this is a legitimate lead guard. If I'm a coach and I'm looking for a player to be an extension to me out there, to keep us in our offense, to run our plays, to get everyone involved, Isaiah is that player. And even though I'm saying, yeah, he has great vision. Yeah, he can find the open man at any time. Yeah, he can literally be and create the offense for others on his team. He can still score the ball because when you have that IQ of knowing, okay, if I come off this pick and roll and I just kind of drive a little bit here, this corner defender is going to shift over and I can kick it there. Guess what? I also understand that if I come off slow and that defender stays, I can get by my guy and finish at the rim. He has an understanding of how he can score as well. Let's talk about his scoring acumen. Because of his build, Isaiah is a strong guard. He is extremely effective going downhill once he gets you on his hip. He is physical. He's not afraid to bump you out the way and still finish in the paint, even in transition. He's extremely fast. He isn't. He can finish above the rim. He's not a freak athlete in terms of vertically, but up and down, extremely fast, extremely fast. He's hard to stop in transition in the half court. Like I said, his IQ in terms of finding everybody else also translate into his own offensive game. He knows how to get to his spots, create space. Isaiah Collier, again, when you try and picture the point, a point guard, a strong point guard who not only is a threat to score, but can also run your offense and get everyone involved and will make the right play, find the right shot. This is the player you're looking for. Last but not least, number 10. This spot was the hardest to pick because you got a lot of guys who, you know what I'm saying, they are, it isn't way too big of a difference. You got players like, you got Kwame Evans, you got Xavier Booker who's come out of nowhere. You got a lot of other players who honestly could go in this spot. It really just depends on who you talk to. But for me, the number 10 player in the class of 2023, Omaha, Billy U69 from Iowa. Omaha is a legitimate Dog, like when I say dog, not taking any plays off, like in your face, constant, constant energy. This is the player I'm describing. They got him listed. Like I said, 6'8", got him listed at the four, but I did see him on the perimeter a little bit as well. Right now, his game is more raw, but what I'm saying is this is a legitimate dog out there on the floor. He's going after every offensive rebound, every defensive rebound. He's going to dive on the floor if he has to. He's trying to block every single shot. And offensively, like I'm saying, his game might be raw right now in terms of skill level, but his production is still high level because of his energy. And he does show flashes of skill because you guys can see Omaha can knock down the three. It isn't the greatest. He doesn't knock it down at a great clip right now, but it looks clean coming off. He can also put it down. I'm not saying he's hitting you with a whole lot of moves at this point. But he can put it down one to two dribbles. He can score in the paint. When he's in the paint, he's trying to dunk everything. Everything. My number 10 player had to go to the player who was consistently relentless, had that dog mentality. But again, at the same time, I'm saying he's a dog. You know, his game might be raw, but he does show flashes. He does show flashes. And again, when you add that, that work ethic, that dog mentality into the flashes that Omaha already shows, I can't wait to see what this dude looks like in five years. But for my entire class of 2023 top 10 rankings, like all of these players and all the other players that I mentioned that might not be in this specific top 10, like these are all extremely talented players. I can't wait to see what all these dudes do in the future. 
like this exact rankings. This is just the first version of it because like I said in the beginning, there always will be a player who's ranked extremely high and they might think they made it and they don't need to work anymore. All of a sudden you drop it and there will be a player like Colin Sexton coming out of nowhere, Shaden Sharp coming out of nowhere unranked and will fly up the rankings. Xavier Booker is looking like one of those when I come with my final rankings next year, he might end up in that top 10. You never know. Again, it's all about who putting in the most work. I can't wait to see. Like, share, subscribe, turn on post notifications. I appreciate you guys watching. Remember, if you want the one-on-one -on -one evaluations, the breakdowns, they go on the channel. Hit my website in the description. Also, if you have any questions for me, need any advice, remember, hit me up on Noodle. That link will also be in the description. Like I always say, I appreciate you guys. I'll see you next time with the next video.